John Krasinski's sequel to A Quiet Place is now out in theaters. So let's talk about if it's worth your watch. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Justin. I love to watch movies. If you guys love to watch movies too, you guys are in the right spot. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and click that bell notification for more up and coming content. Following the deadly events at home, the Abbott family must now face the terrors of the outside world as they continue their fight for survival and silence. Forced to venture into the unknown, they quickly realize that the creatures that hunt by sound are not the only threats that lurk beyond the sand path. A Quiet Place is a horror film that has such a good idea on paper that easily could have been executed in the wrong way. But with John Krasinski's direction and his acting in the first film alongside Emily Blunt, that movie was a masterpiece. It was one of the best horror films I have seen and it was executed so well that utilized sound and silence in a way to elevate a lot of scenes. And following up with a sequel that continues right after the events of the first film, it could be a bit of a gamble. Could it once again spark that terror that that first film delivered on? And I'm happy to say that it does. And A Quiet Place 2 is one of the best horror sequels that I have seen personally and one of the best films of this year. By continuing to explore these monsters that hunt only by sound and picking up right after the events of the first film, you're really able to explore the world that John Krasinski started off in the first film. In Quiet Place 2, he gets sole writing credit, whereas in the first film, he had to work alongside someone to write the first Quiet Place film. But the movie really expands on the world that was set up in the first film. The movie opens up day one. It's not really much of a spoiler since there is a lot of trailers that have this certain scene where we do have John Krasinski in the movie. We see these monsters come to Earth and how everybody is reacting to it. There's a lot of hysteria. People don't know what to do right away. People kind of get the sense to, you know, absolutely remain silent. The direction from John Krasinski within those first few minutes of the movie shows why he needs to continue directing, and he is such a great director. There's a lot of shots that linger on the action and that sense of terror that is set up within the movie. Everything is loud, and since you saw that first film, you know that noise is something that could be terrifying within this movie. So all of the noise of cars crashing into each other and people screaming you're worried you're stressed out with everything that is happening but these people don't know how to react to it a lot of scenes in the beginning are filmed so beautifully and this just shows that john krasinski needs to continue directing and he needs to continue directing horror films because of the way that he's able to position the camera linger on certain scenes make it just so tense and from there on after the day one after the opening scene we continue after the events of the first film. John Krasinski once again continues to utilize sound as a way to induce fear into the movie. And when there is sound, it elevates these sequences to where you're absolutely stressed out to the point where if you're in the movie theater, you don't want to make a sound either and when you have these long periods of moments where there is no sound you're absolutely stressed because of the second that someone steps on a leaf or someone bumps into something or knocks something over it could mean the end to their lives and john krasinski presents that tension so well with the sound and utilizes absolute silence as a way to progress the story and the tension within the film. There's a lot more sound within this movie compared to the first film. People are more comfortable with just whispering and the second someone whispers, you're stressed and the tension is there because you're always wondering how strong is the hearing of these monsters? It was explored very well in the first film and we get to expand on that in the second film. In the second of someone dropping something or glass bottles shaking against each other in any other movie, it would just be okay, it would just be fine. But in this movie, the second that something loud happens, the reaction from Emily Blunt and Noah Jupe and Millicent Simmons and Killian Murphy, the reactions to sound is exactly how we are feeling in the theater. 
Emily Blunt once again gives a really good performance. She is playing the mother of three in this film and she has to protect her family. There's moments where she steps up as the hero and moments where she's tender and sweet to her family, but she gives a performance that is tense as well. With being in the first film and being in the second film, she's able to communicate to her co-stars without actually talking and that's able to showcase everybody's acting talents since they're not relying on everybody's conversations or dialogue in the film they have to give performances that are believable from their face they have to look scared they have to remain silent with this movie being absolutely silent for a good majority of the film the actors are called upon to deliver these really good performances millicent simmons is featured a lot more in this movie compared to the first film she stood up as a strong character in the movie she's trying to make her father proud and stand up and try to find a resource that could destroy these monsters but she is featured a lot more in the movie and also Killian Murphy um, from the original trailers I didn't think he'd be in this movie that much but he's a lot in this movie almost to where he is one of the main characters compared to Millicent Simmons and their relationship develops very strongly throughout the film to where they have this bond and they rely on each other and Killian Murphy much like Emily Blunt and Millicent Simmons and Noah Jupe, much like everybody else, he delivers this performance that's tense without saying much. There's so many moments of pure terror in the film with uh, loud noises that are happening that attracts these monsters or just absolute silent moments where you're just waiting for something to happen and a noise to happen and signal to the monsters that these people are here. So the moments of absolute silence raise that tension or something clinging against something else, those moments are tense as well. From beginning to end, this movie is filled with tension. It is filled with moments that are executed so well and silence that elevates certain scenes and loud noises that just induce fear. When we see a horror movie that has these jump scares with loud noises like a bird flying around or your friend scaring you, it's pointless and it doesn't serve anything to the movie. But that's not the case for A Quiet Place Part 2. Loud noises serves a purpose in the movie, and silence serves a purpose as well. A Quiet Place 2 is a solid follow-up to the first film. It is executed beautifully. John Krasinski's performance, John Krasinski's direction, and his utilization of sound and silence is something that is very unique for a horror film. It's an idea that looks great on paper, and it's executed so well that there's so much world exploring in this movie and you want to know what other people are doing in the film. And we do explore a little bit of that towards the end of the film. And the movie ends so abruptly to where you're excited for a third part, which I heard is not going to be directed by Krasinski. He's going to co-write the film but I'm excited to see what they do for a third time around. Can they create that charm once again in a third film? One of the best horror sequels I have seen and the choice to have day one and follow it up from there is solid. You explore the world, the acting is really great, the silence is still very solid and tense. Everybody remains quiet in the movie theater. I had my soda and I had to sip it very quietly because I didn't want to make any noise and I didn't want to miss something. That's just the kind of film A Quiet Place Part 2 is. I'm going to go ahead and give A Quiet Place Part 2 an A. Thank you guys for checking my review for A Quiet Place Part 2. Have you guys seen it by chance? What do you think about this horror sequel? Let me know in the comment section down below and stay tuned for more up and coming content. My name is Just Watch the Movies and you guys stay classy YouTube.